how to have a disciplined tongue. The tongue is indeed greater than generals and their armies. It can fuel our lives so that they become fiery furnaces. Or it can cool our lives with the soothing wind of the Spirit. First, we must ask God to cauterize our lips and confess, as Isaiah did. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 6, 5. Then we have to submit ourselves to the cleansing touch. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Isaiah 6, 8. Isaiah's outline as a spiritual exercise, which is performed with every heart, will work wonders in our lives. Let all of us do this today. Secondly, hand in hand with the first step, there must be continuous prayer in relation to the use of our tongues, regular, detailed prayer. This, coupled with the first step, will create a spiritual miracle. Thirdly, we must decide to discipline ourselves in terms of the use of the tongue by making solemn decisions such as the following. We must enduringly and lovingly speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4, 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. We must avoid being party to or a conduit for gossip. Proverbs 16, 28. A forward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separeth chief friends. Proverbs 17, 9. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. Proverbs 26.20 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out, so where there is no talebearer, the strife ceaseth. To refrain from insincere flattery, Proverbs 26.28 A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. We must refrain from running down another. James 4.11 Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law, and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. We must refrain from degrading humor. Ephesians 5.4 Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. We must refrain from sarcasm. Proverbs 26, 24, and 25. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. We must memorize scripture passages that teach the proper use of the tongue. It can be shaped by hell, or it can be a tool of heaven. Offered to God on the altar, the tongue has great power for good. It can proclaim the life-changing message of the salvation. And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Romans 10, 14 and 15. It has power for sanctification as we share the word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. John 17, 17. It has a power for healing. For when we come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without fightings, within were fears. Nevertheless, God, that comforteth those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. 
when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. 2 Corinthians 7, 5-7 It has power for worship. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Hebrews 13, 15 